Hi, what's up guys? Um, in today's video, I'll be taking you through um, a tour of the basics of electrolysis. So, electrolysis, basics. So, what is electrolysis? Well, let's break this word down and take a look at and see what it means. Well, the electro in electrolysis means electricity. And what is electricity? Well, electricity is the flow of charges. And the word lysis is a Greek word meaning to break down. So electrolysis basically means to break something down using electricity or to break something down when charges flow. Well, um, I've written down a formal definition of electrolysis here from a textbook, so let's take a look. Electrolysis is the process by which ionic substances are decomposed, namely broken down into simpler substances when an electric current is passed through them. So the natural question to ask would be, what sorts of substances can be electrolyzed? So, what can we electrolyze? Well, we know that we need charges to flow, and what substances do we know have charges in them? Well, those would be ionic substances. And we not only need ions, but we need the ions to be able to flow. So we need substances in which ions can flow. Um, and to be exact, these ions have to be in the molten or aqueous state. Aqueous meaning dissolved in water. So a solid ionic lattice wouldn't work because in a solid lattice the ions are fixed in place and hence they cannot flow. So we need molten or aqueous ionic substances. So next we'll take a look at an example um, at how we might actually achieve this in the lab. How can we actually break something down, um, break a chemical down in the lab? So I'm going to start with a container. And I will have two carbon rods in this container, which I will fill with the liquid that I'm trying to electrolyze. These carbon rods are usually made of, well, these carbon rods are what we call the electrodes. And I'm using carbon in this case, which makes them inert, meaning they're not reactive. And next, I'll connect them to a cell. So the longer end of the cell is the positive end, the shorter end is the negative end. And the electrode that's connected to the negative end of the battery, we call that the cathode. While the electrode that's connected to the positive end of the battery, that's the anode. And now I'm going to fill this beaker or container with the solution that I want to break down. In this case, I'm going to use a solution, or rather, uh, I'm going to use molten lead bromide. So this is bromide, bro lead bromide in its molten state. I basically take a block of lead bromide and um, heat it up so much that it melts. Um, so to be clear, the, the lead bromide is, is not mixed in with water of any sort. It's just pure lead bromide in there. So if I have lead bromide in a molten state, uh, what do I have in the solution right here? I'm going to have lead ions. 
and bromine ions. So what will happen is that because opposite charges attract, the lead ions are going to be attracted to the positive electrode, namely the anode. Um, sorry, the bromine ions will be attracted to the positive electrode, while the lead ions will be attracted to the negative electrode. And when these ions reach the electrodes, a chemical reaction takes place at the electrodes. At the cathode, which I'll denote with a minus, and the anode I'll call the plus. So the cell will supply electrons to the cathode. So what happens is that at the cathode, the lead ions will receive two electrons and form solid lead. So these electrons are supplied by the cell and they come in to neutralize the two positive charges on the lead ion forming solid lead. And since solid lead doesn't really stick to carbon, it's gonna fall down here. So so we're gonna we're gonna find solid lead being deposited at the bottom of the beaker just below the cathode right here. And at the anode what we'll have is that the bromine ions will be discharged because the positive terminal of the battery here, you can think of the positive terminal of the battery as attracting the electrons from the bromine. So the bromine are going to give up their electrons. They're going to give two electrons up to be exact because bromine exists as a diatomic molecule. And so we'll see a cloud of bromine gas forming around the anode there. So if you've um, talked about redox reactions, this may look familiar. The lead gained electrons, so the lead was reduced. So if you you know if, if if you minus something, you can think about it as reducing it. And the opposite of reduction is oxidation, so The bromine is oxidized since it lost electrons. So to summarize, what happened at the cathode was that um, a lead solid is formed. And what happened at the anode was that bromine got discharged and formed bromine gas. So we've achieved what we set out to do. We wanted to break down lead bromide into its constituent, constituent parts, namely lead and bromine. So you can think about electrolysis as a process of reversing a chemical reaction. You may have heard that chemical reactions are pretty hard to reverse. Well, this is an example of how, in certain cases, we might be able to reverse a chemical reaction. So in this video, we've talked about uh, what electrolysis is, and we've seen an example of how you might actually electrolyze a molten substance in the lab. A molten substance. So in the next video, um, we're going to talk about how you can electrolyze an aqueous substance.